That being said, it is time. It is time to switch your screen to speaker view. Uh, before you do that, I would click on Kat's little box, tap her little three dots and click pin. That way when she's talking, uh, she'll stay on your screen the entire time. She won't move. Um, Kat Tapilo, the owner of Social Cat Media. Uh, Kat helps businesses develop strong social media strategies, uh, attainable, brilliant content planning systems, and above all, uh, she helps you create content that sells. Uh, Kat's been working in the social sphere for more than eight years. Uh, she's worked with national brands, international sporting organizations, huge, and countless small businesses. A social media genius who will try any DIY uh, project, loves a good hashtag, and shares my affinity for the color pink. Please welcome Kat Tabulo. Kat, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited, and I'm coming to you from my office that has a pink ceiling, and I'm wearing pink. I got my pink sign behind me, and I don't, you can't really tell in the lighting, but yesterday, after a year of COVID lockdown, I dyed my hair pink because... We've hit that point. We've hit that point of the pandemic. So I now have pink hair too. Uh, just fully embracing the branding. And I'm really excited this morning to chat a bit about social media mindset and making social media a fun thing to do. I know as business owners, like we get onto social media and we're so excited because it's like a free, awesome tool to connect with our audience. But then like very quickly it becomes sometimes a bit of a drag and something that we feel like we have to do instead of we, something we want to do. And I actually put together a few slides because I really like gifts. So I am going to share my screen and go into there and we'll see these gifts I was talking about. I'll also open up the chat box. So if anyone has any questions as we're chatting, um, feel free to drop them there. And then we'll also have some time after for some Q&A, which will be awesome. So as I was saying, social media is meant to be fun. If you think about why it was created, it's like this amazing opportunity to connect with people. Like you think of like, if you can even imagine like 10 years ago, the thoughts of a business to be able to just like post our message and like connect with our audiences in such an organic, natural way. It was like unheard of. And now we have all this capability at our fingertips, but here comes the first the gif. It can sometimes feel like this as business owners because we get frustrated that things aren't working. We find that we're spending way too much time on there and we're not getting results. Um, one thing that I really noticed lately is there was this big kind of push of these graphics, but like the algorithm has changed, like saves and shares of the new like speaking um, specifically about Instagram. And I think this is a really like dangerous narrative if we buy into like the algorithm is out to get us or that we're always working against social media just because it's something that we're spending lots of time on. We're investing that time in our business. We want to kind of flip that script to make sure that we are using social media to its full um, capacity, but also making it something that is healthy for us as business owners, fun to do and enjoyable. And that's something that like lately I've been really passionate about because obviously I'm someone who spends a good part of my day on my phone. And I've definitely noticed the, um, the difference of when I'm using social media in a positive way, something that I'm getting something out of it versus when I'm just like mindlessly scrolling, like the different how I feel after I leave the app and in speaking to a lot of business owners, that's something that a lot of people, people struggle with is using social media in a way that feels good. And when it comes to social media, the one thing I always say basically in any talk I ever do is the power of social media comes down to your why. So this means both your business why, like why you do what you do, why you are in the field you're in, but also why we're on social. It's always good to be rooted in those business um, goals and those business desires when we're on social. That way it'll help us prevent us from getting caught up in like how many likes we're getting or um, just like those like vanity metrics when it's really easy to think about, okay, like what's going to get me the most likes when we really should be focusing on our business goals 
and our goals for social media. So the first thing like I would encourage you to do, even like you're already established on social media, take a step back and think about why you do what you do. So like what drove you to be in the field you're in? Like what caused you to be an entrepreneur and really dive in deep into those like fundamentals? Um, Cause really when I think about social media, it's all about that connection and that human connection. And yes, we're business owners, but it's really important to still communicate that human side of your business because that's what people are going to connect with. We don't connect with um, marketing messages or like, you know, sales. We connect with the person who's running those accounts. So definitely don't be afraid to incorporate more of you and the personal side uh, in your social media. But it's really important to think about why you do what you do. Just have a good sense of like, how can you communicate that on social media? So if you, you know, work in the clothing industry and what you'd love is um, helping people feel like confident and empowered in what the, and how they look, that's like that, that little piece of your story and that you can communicate in social media and talk about that through your posts. So think about your business why, but we also want to think about our why we're on social media. So I think obviously we're all in social media as business people to, you know, make sales, grow our brand awareness. But we also want to think about like the goals beyond that, because if that's the only reason on social, only reason we're on social, it can feel a little draining because if people aren't responding to those messages, it you feel like it's, it's for nothing. So it's really important to think about goals beyond like those marketing goals for social media and think about like what you want to give to your audience. So not just what you get from social media, which would be like, yeah, like we were just talking about brand awareness, spreading your marketing, but we really want to think about what does our audience get from, from us and that value you can provide for your audience. So this can be anything can be, um, you want to provide education, so like tips and trainings. Um, for example, like I share social media tips. Um, you'll see like a home decor company sharing styling uh, tips. So think about it as education. Are you there to connect with your audience and really create that community? Do you want to inspire people? Do you want to build a portfolio? So it's important to have those social media goals on top of your business goals. And this will help us stay rooted. That way, if like a certain post isn't performing or you're getting frustrated with things on social right now, you know, okay, am I achieving my goals? And that way you don't get as caught up in the metrics or the engagement. Step one is making sure that we're achieving our goals and then we can build from there. And as I'm saying, we want to create content that achieves those goals. So if, you, if one of your goals is to connect with your audience and really build a strong community, it's time to start bringing in more of that personal side of your content and really sharing a bit more of your story, engaging with other local accounts and really building that community. And the most important thing is we, we don't wanna just be posting because we feel like we should. As I was saying, like social media is this awesome opportunity for businesses, but we really wanna think about why we're using it and, and what we're getting out of it and what we're giving. We shouldn't just be posting because we're like, oh shoot, it's been a week. I need to get a post out there because that's probably not achieving our business goals if we don't know like why we're posting. And it's probably not giving a lot of value to our audience if we're just posting to put a message out there. So really thinking about why are you posting and what that value that you're giving to people is. And this is something I talk about often is like that sweet spot of content. And it goes kind of both like, there's multiple ways to look at this um, Venn diagram. So in terms of content you're putting out there, like what you want to talk about and the overlap of what your audience cares about, like that is the, the ultimate piece of content right there in the middle when it is like something that is achieving your business goals of let's say educating and it's something that your audience cares about. So where that overlaps is that's where you get your content sweet spot. And the same thing with being on social, that, figuring out your goal for social. So like if it is community, looking at how you can overlap that with something that your audience cares about. So they're always 
making sure you're doing your own business goals, but framing it in a way that your audience will care about. And the other thing I've been talking a lot about lately is managing your relationship with social media and screen time, which kind of what I talked about at the beginning is that uh, I, I was on a workshop the other day um, as part of the Strike Up conference on Thursday last week. And it was about wellness. And the speaker was saying that the average person checks their phone 150 times a day, which is like, like, oh, like such a shocking number. But then now as I go through my day, I can like see it happening as I just like open my phone for no reason. And the kind of downside of doing this for as a business on social media is that if we're checking it often and we're kind of just like always popping into it, we lose the intention of what we're doing. So it's really easy to open up Facebook and scroll a little bit and then put our phone away or open up Instagram, and watch a few stories. And we end up spending a lot of time on social media, but not necessarily using that in an impactful way. So some of the tips I have for managing that screen time or managing your relationship with social media is thinking about why we're opening the app and like what our goals are for going on to on, going on to social. So like opening up Instagram and saying, okay, I'm going to spend 10 minutes now, like engaging with my community. So actually like commenting on posts and responding to stories in terms of businesses. And we want more engagement and we want people to be commenting on our posts. One of the best ways to get more engagement is to give engagement. So it's like act like, you know, um, treat people like the way you want to be treated. It's true though, if we all are being more intentional and more engaging on social, it all comes back around. And in terms of like the, the less, um, let's say higher, the less higher thinking of that is like, when you are engaging with someone, it's, it almost is like going to shake someone's hand at a networking event. Like when I'll get a notification that, oh, the Peterborough Chamber commented on my post. And even if I don't know the Peterborough Chamber yet, I'm like, hmm, who is this person? Let me go check them out. So it works both ways. It helps just in that overall making social media a more enjoyable place because we're like, wow, we're actually connecting with people and making um, positive impacts on there. But it also helps in terms of like the marketing sense. Like you're getting your name out there. You're engaging with new people. So I always recommend like, either thinking about like why you're opening the app. Okay, this is my time to respond to comments on my post and engage with X number of people, five new people. Or I'm a big fan of timers too. So like put a 10 minute timer on your phone and be like, okay, this is my time. And when you have that time limit, you're a lot more intentional about what you're doing. You're not just gonna be like mindlessly scrolling, which is one of, what's one of my favorite things to do. So like having that time limit, really make sure that you're like, okay, I got 10 minutes, like let's make it count. Let's create some good connections on social. One of the big things I've been working on now is making sure I have time scheduled in my day for social media. <laughs> um, because I think we all check in or like a lot of us check in throughout the day. Like, okay, I'm gonna check Instagram now. And then it's 15 minutes here. And then I'm gonna go check it now. I wonder if people responded to my last post. And that time really adds up and it's easy to get frustrated saying like, I've been on, I'm spending an hour on Instagram a day and not really seeing results. So I've actually put in two blocks in my calendar. So some like half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the afternoon, which at first I was like, that's so much time that I should be wor like working, even though social media is work, it's marketing work. But if you look at like your app usage on your phone, you'll probably notice like how much time you're actually spending on social because those five, 10 minute little chunks really add up. And in terms of like productivity and all this kind of stuff that like I've been looking at, those checking Instagram for five minutes in the middle of a project really like affects your ability to dive back into that project. So I would recommend like setting aside, even if it's 15 minutes in your day and having that be your social media business check-in time. Um, and it's good to like separate the time that you're on, the time that you're on social for personal and also for business. So at nighttime, um, 
like I have time scheduled in my in my calendar because I live in my calendar for just like for that mindless scrolling, watching stories, checking out time for my personalness. But in the day, I had those times scheduled for work. Um, Alyssa asks, is there a time to schedule check it daily? Any time works. It's really about figuring out the time in your schedule. And this is a really good opportunity to like make sure that you're posting in story. So if you know every day at 10 a.m. you have that social media chunk scheduled, it's and people start to expect that from you. Like, oh, Alyssa always, you know, is posting a story around 10 a.m. when she's having her morning coffee or whatever it is. So you can make it habitual for yourself, but it's also good for your audience too. They get that like normalcy and the, they know what to expect from you. So I have a morning time and an afternoon time in my calendar and that's for responding to comments on post, engaging with others, doing some of that engagement I was talking about. So it's really good to kind of block that away from the rest of your working day. So you know, okay, I'm going on Instagram and this is what I'm gonna do. As I saying, like time for stories, engagement, outreach, so engaging with new people. And the other big thing is keeping boundaries. So social media is like a tool and we can use that tool for good or we can use it for bad. And there definitely are negative sides to social media, but we can really focus on the positive things. And like, we have the power to choose how we use it and how it impacts us. So in terms of keeping boundaries, it's really important to like recognize how social media makes you feel like what things make you feel good on social and what things don't make you feel good and it's about finding what you like to do so my thing i'll say is like you don't have to listen to everything i say on social media like i'm one of saying like oh you should try reels you should do this but if doing a reel on instagram or doing a live video on facebook doesn't make you feel good then don't do it. It's about finding those things that that as a business owner, as a person that you enjoy doing on social. So if you love Instagram, go for it. If you love Twitter, you don't have to listen to me talking about how awesome Instagram is. Like focus on Twitter, go for it. Like you can have success on any platform doing any type of content creation. So it's really about finding what makes you feel good and really focusing on there. We don't wanna like make ourselves do something that we don't want to do. On Instagram or other, on Facebook, you can also like unfollow mute accounts that don't make you feel good. Like if there's someone that you're always compare, comparing yourself to or someone um, who you, you like following, but at the same time when you see their post, it kind of <sighs> makes you feel that way. Unfollow them or you can mute them so they don't know that you unfollowed them. Really wanna curate your social media space into something that makes you feel good. Keeping scheduled times is a really powerful tool so that you know this is my time on social you can be really mindful about how you're using it another really thing I talk about all the time but scheduling posts in advance is also a really great tool so if you can dedicate like an hour or two a week in a chunk as part of your marketing time to pump out a week or two of posts that's a huge way to keep boundaries from social that way you know your posts are going out in advance you don't need to worry every day about going on and crafting your post. It's already there. And then you can just use those 15 minutes to go and engage and create those connections. Always remember your goals. So going back to like why you're on social, what your business goals are and making sure that what you're doing feels good to you. Another big um, tip is to turn off notifications for any social media app. And that just helps too. So that when you open up Facebook, you open up Twitter, it's because you chose to. It's not because your phone says, hey, like someone likes your tweet. It That can get dangerous in terms of like the constant um, screen checking. So if you turn off notifications and then have that time where you know, okay, this is what, this is when I'm gonna go on social. This is when I'm gonna engage. That prevents some of that like constant wanting to open our phones. You can also set up screen time limits. So if, if screen time is something that you're like, um, focused on, which is something I'm focused on right now. Um, in iPhone and in Android, you can go into the settings and set up limits on different apps. So I have limits across my phone that at like 9.15, my phone basically locks, except for a certain, certain apps. So that the, the, the apps lock, I can enter a password, but it just 
again, it makes you think about opening an app. Um, I also have app limits on specific apps. So for example, Instagram has like an hour limit a day. And before I set up those scheduled times, like I'd hit that hour by like 2 p.m. And I've never had time, like I never had time scheduled to go on Instagram, but within just those random, I'm going to post a story or I'm going to check this. I was using an hour of my day, which is like mind boggling to me. Um, so screen time limits can be really interesting from like just getting to understand how you're using social media in a new way and also limit time if that's something that you're focusing on. As I saying, focus on what you like doing and remember your why, why you're on social media. And social media is a long game. So it can get really sucked in. Like if we're on it all the time, that's gonna help us um, succeed or we, we need to be on it all the time. But this is like a daily practice. And so for burning ourselves out one day by being on there all the time, it's not gonna be sustainable. So it's really about finding the systems and the check-in times and everything that's gonna keep, keep you enjoying social media, feeling good about it. And just so that like, it is something that you look forward to, do, to doing, not something that feels like a drag every single day. And so it's focusing on what you get from social in terms of those connections and the marketing and the brand awareness, but also what you give to it. So I think often we get a little bit too, we get focused, which is totally fair as business owners on what we get from social that like, okay, I'm going to get 20 new followers and I want to do this and I want to get this marketing message out there. But it's really important also to flip the script and think about what we give to social. How can we connect with our audience? How can we give them value? And so that balance again of like the give and get is really important to making social media a sustainable practice in your business and in your life. And that's, and that's all folks. So let's, this is my, I'm at social, social cat media across the board and we can connect during my scheduled social media time, which is 10 AM and 2 PM daily. I do pop in other times occasionally, but like that's been a huge, huge game changer for me. It's just like having those times where, um, this is my time for social media. And then I put my phone in my drawer of my desk when I'm not, you know, on it. Because even just like seeing your phone is like a reminder. It's like, hey, like you should check me. Like someone might've liked your post. But when it's in like your drawer out of sight in another room, you're working and you forget about it. So like, that's another big thing you can do is like put your phone out of sight when you're working on a certain project. That way you don't get that temptation to check it. Oh, Tiffany is muted. <laughs> Every time. Thank you so much, Kat. We really appreciate you. Does anyone have any questions for Kat before I burn through your chamber news? I thought I could pick your brain quick. I hope you don't mind. Go for it. So... I'm just interested to see what your advice would be to combat negative comments. Do you hide them? Do you, I know it depends on the negative, right? If it's like a, I had a pedicure there and I hate it, you know, sometimes you can comment. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Let's connect and, and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But when it, when it's just something completely obtuse, hide it, delete it, comment. What do you think? So I totally agree. So there's like two different types of negative comments. So there's one that someone is like unhappy and there's, there's actually a solution that you can offer. I think when it's something like, like that, it's really good to comment back and to offer solutions just to show people like if someone, oh, like you got my order wrong or something, then you can say like, you can show how awesome your customer service is and like show the positivity of your brand. But if it's just like, if it's an attack, if it's hateful, um rude those are things I'd recommend like taking off of social media so whether it's hiding the comment deleting it offer the person the opportunity to take that take that offline that like send them a personal message saying like we're you know we're sorry like if you if you want to talk like this is our email this number but those like hateful or like not relevant stuff take it off same thing with spam comments it just remove those like if someone's I made $5,000 with 
this trader and then you just delete those. It drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Kat. Anybody else have any questions before we go? Stuart does. Um, thanks, Tiff. Um, I just wanted to um, roll back to something that Ashley said earlier when she was talking about radical generosity, um, something that she's going to be learning about with this she CEO, which is just too cool. But it reminded me of a statement, and then you, Kat, got into it uh, as well when you were talking about um, uh, not only being intentional with what you're doing on social media, but being generous with what you're with what you're doing. So giving is as important to engagement as anything else, probably more important than anything else. But I shared this with Ashley before she um, before she had to leave. But there's an expression called um, the theory of reciprocity, um, and mm -hmm. it's it's an old concept. Um, um, uh, that, that most salespeople know. Um, but I think it really, really applies to what you're saying. The more, when you give something to someone, and I'm sure you've all experienced this, when you get something from someone, there's this incredible urge to give back. You have to reciprocate. and But that only lasts so long to the point where it actually becomes an, a negative because you get embarrassed because you haven't had the chance to return the favor kind of thing. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there because I re that really resonated for me. Uh, even if your why as a business is clear, and it certain, certainly should be focused on your on your clients as opposed to your own business, even, even if that's clear, it takes constant reminding to, to remind what you're doing on social media. And uh, I just love the way that you put that together. So I just wanted to share that expression. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, it's a great, a great way of talking about that. And I think like, I shared a post, I think last Friday about like, like all these like what if statements, like what if we opened up social media and commented on every post? Like it, we're so used to opening it up and just like consuming, which is fine. Like there's nothing bad with having those time where you just, it's like binge watching Netflix, like just binging content. But what if like you had five minutes a day where you opened up Instagram and commented and engaged with every post you saw, like it's, it's such a small change, but it's really like radical in the way we use social media. So think about really being intentional with engaging and community building and yeah, and giving what we want to get. And being positive too, right? Yeah. Like not everything needs an opinion. Maybe just a positive statement is nice, right? Like, <laughs> I'm a bit, I like to cheer people on. <laughs> Excellent. Kat, you're brilliant. We appreciate everything you shared with us today. Thank you for letting us record you and put you out later as well. Um, if you uh, want to connect with Kat, uh, you can do so via chat. Uh, reach out to her on our social media. Reach out to me. I can connect you warmly via email, uh, whatever you like. 